All right, whenever you're ready. Welcome. talk is sequences of approximations. The purpose is to illustrate an idea that's used not just in calculus but in all of mathematics. Very natural idea. We have a problem to understand some object, I will call it X. I've drawn it as a squishy blob to indicate what's hard about it. It's, it's difficult to get your hands on. It resists direct analysis. So what we want to know is some property. We want to measure some, something about x. I'll call it f of x. So what do you do when you have something difficult and you need to measure it and understand it? You throw away some of the difficulties and you simplify and you work with the simplification. This is a natural thing to do. Here's a picture of what that might look like. I will take this simpler object, which is easy to get at because it's straight and blocky and it is somehow close to x. I'll call it y. It's an approximation for x so that the value f of y will be an estimate. I'm not saying it's the same as f of x, but maybe it's close. If we do the estimation well, then we get close to f of x. Well, here's the problem. In real life, we sometimes need to know f of x, and we need to know very close. We need fine accuracy over the value. And maybe f of y has a lot of error. So what do you do? You don't throw this away. You start with this and you make an improvement. You refine the estimate. On this y, I could build little bump outs and bump ins and bump in a little bit here and in a little here and out a little here. And the result is an improvement over the original y. So here's my new y. Keep that. Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Here's a new straight-sided sort of thing. I'll call it now y2, and I'll call this one y1. y2 now is an improvement over y1. It is close also to x, hopefully closer, in such a way that the value f of y2 is closer to f of x. And now you've started a process of taking approximations and improvements that can be continued. You can build a y1 and then a y2 and then by making more bump outs and bump ins and refining the shape of y you can get closer and closer. The price you pay is the effort it takes to build the new pieces. It gets a little more expensive to make, a little more expensive to measure the functions, but the payoff is that you get increasing accuracy. So the y n's are approaching x in some meaningful sense, and f of y n, the values, is approaching f of x. Here's the summary. We wish to understand x and calculate some property f of x. We construct a sequence of nice approximations, starting with a first, y1, then improving y2, then y3, and so on, so that y n approaches x, and f of yn approaches f of x with greater and greater accuracy. So we're improving. And now you've started a process that has a natural trajectory to it. You can now make more bumps, bump outs, and bump ins and fit a little better by shaving a little off here and bumping a little bit there. And you now have a sequence. First approximation, second approximation, third approximation, and so on. The hope is that this is somehow convergent. Somehow yn approaches x as n grows and grows, and f of yn approaches f of x. This is a terrifically fruitful and useful idea. We're going to use it over and over again in calculus. It turns out not to be just a calculus trick, this is a meta problem with a meta solution throughout all of mathematics 
and it's called sequences of approximations. Next, I will show an example of why you might have to be careful when you do sequences of approximations. Even though it's a simple, beautiful, natural idea, it doesn't always work the way you want it to. Here's the picture. I've got a piece of a curve. Maybe this is a bit of a graph of a function. Let's call that curve x. I will place it conveniently with its intercepts at 1 along both axes. And the thing we wish to measure is its length. So perhaps x is some kind of difficult graph, hard to work with. So to find its length, we will start with an approximation. The first one is very rough. I'll just go over and down with the idea that straight line segments are easy to work with as a replacement for the curve of x. So here's my y1. First approximation, I admit that it's not a very good fit, but it is somehow close to x, and the hope is it will at least give you an estimate for the value of length. And I can see right away how I can improve. Instead of using two line segments, I will go with over and down and over and down. There's my y2. Y2. Now that's clearly a better fit, and maybe f of y2 is a better approximation of f of x. And there's a natural sequence of approximations now. You can see what's coming. Instead of over and down and over and down, we will do many, many, many stair steps. And as the number of stairs gets very large, you can imagine this little sawtooth stair step picture becoming quite a close fit to the curve x. So y1, y2, y3, and so on with yn in a very meaningful way getting close to x. You can see this when you stand at the back of the room. We can draw fine enough stair steps so that you can't even see the difference. We get beyond the resolution of our eyes and it looks like a perfect fit. Of course it's not perfect, but the hope is f of y in is approaching f of x. And here's the problem. This fails badly. It's easy to see. Look at that first one. The length is the over 1, it's the horizontal run, plus the vertical drop down 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. The length is easy to see. Look at the second one, the one with over, down, and over, down. You have two stair treads going over one unit. The total is one unit of horizontal run. The drop is clearly one unit of horizontal drop. The length of y2 is 2. And this always happens. No matter how many steps you put in, if you add up all those stair treads, they go one unit horizontally. Add up all those stair risers, they drop one unit vertically. f of yn is always 2. This value is not converging. The error that was present in the first approximation never goes away. We don't get good approximations of f of x. That's an example of what can go wrong. The takeaway lesson is you have to be careful. You cannot do this blindly. You have to arrange so that your approximations not only get close to the object x, but the values also get close. And that's part of the art that we will study in the two semesters of calculus. Here's one final example of a powerful use of sequences of approximations that comes from second semester calculus. From first semester calculus, you learned about the tangent line approximation to a graph. The purpose of a tangent line is that it is a simple thing, it is a line, and it replaces the difficulties of the curve of a possibly difficult or complicated function. It gives you useful things like approximations to values. The limitation is that the quality of those approximations deteriorates rapidly away from the point of tangency. You see that curve moving away from the point of the tangent line. And so you ask, how could I improve? And here come sequences of approximations. The tangent line starts like this, and you want to go one step up in complication, but still have something you can get your hands on. The idea is natural. Add on a one degree higher term. To the tangent line, you add a square term, making a quadratic polynomial, or a parabola. 
that parabola bends, and so that parabola has a chance of fitting the graph of the function better. And it can be engineered that way. And then you have a natural sequence of adding a cubed term, and then a fourth degree term, and so on, building longer and longer polynomials. These tangent polynomials fit the graph better and better over larger and larger regions. That's a beautiful sequence of approximations that is terrifically successful. The theory of Taylor polynomials is started in calculus too, but pervades much of calculus and much of mathematics.